All right, so today what we're doing, we're going to convert this uh, the IBC tote or whatever they're called, uh, approximately 275 gallon container into um, a container garden. So uh, what we're going to do first is take this off and then actually split this thing in half and uh, throw the bottom part away, which is the, the stand evidently. And then we're going to use all this stuff and create uh, a wicking bed uh, container garden. Actually, we're going to do it with both of these. And uh, in a way that creates a reservoir of water in the bottom. Um, and we're using, yes, we're using a bunch of bagged stuff. I know I could have bought it cheaper, but uh, no trolls, please. Um, wanted to make sure I knew what I was getting, the quality that I was getting, and all that stuff. So. Uh, as this goes together, we'll start showing you how it goes in. Uh, pretty cool, and I think it'll last for several years. So, uh, here we go. Okay, so we took the bottom part off. and <clears throat> i got to straighten those out a little bit. But uh, we're going to do that with the cage off of the plastic. So what we've done is set this down on a fairly level piece of ground. And uh, <clears throat> so the bottom of the tank is actually resting on the ground. And this is down as far as it'll get. Um, and we're basically just going to measure the halfway point and make some marks at the halfway point all the way around and then cut it in half. Uh, thank Rob, thanks Rob Robbies, I believe that was your, uh, your uh, channel name. Uh, great ideas. I'll, I'll post that later. A guy who had this down in Australia that's doing the same thing. Alright, cool. Alright, so I used an angle grinder and I cut the... Uh, the cage of the tote in half and then I used some uh, uh, cold galvanizing uh, spray and just sprayed each of the areas there and some of the spots that look like they may be a little rusty or whatever and uh, anyway just keep it keep the rust down to a minimum maybe help some of the areas that were already kind of getting bad but uh, anyway so we're gonna move this over to there and I'm going to bring my totes over there, the plastic pieces that I cut in half and washed out, and uh, start the beds. All right, so we cut the totes in half, the frames in half, and then we just moved the frames over here and then put the totes down in the middle of them. And uh, so now you can see the beginnings of what we're getting ready to do here. The next step is to put the, um, the drain pipe that's already got the slits see the slits in here um, put those in there but this is going to be your uh, our uh, aquifer basically this is our our um, our water retention so again we go all right so our reservoir is going to be this this pipe and so it goes in like this and uh, that basically takes up all the water will be able to settle in here and and uh, and then we'll put the, the uh, fill pipe right over here so we can fill up the bottom with water and the rest of this will be filled with soil up to here. The beginnings of a wicking bed. Okay, so we've got this in there. We put a fill pipe in. And then I'm using the lava rock in the corners here um, <clears throat> to give it a little bit more of a reservoir. Um, uh, the water will still... Um, there's lots of voids in here for the water, right? So uh, the lava rock will um, uh, help that out. And I'm not sure, but I've read somewhere that lava rock was actually really good also for some minerals and things like that. But uh, that's not why I'm using it. It was cheaper. It was lighter. <laughs> and it takes up a lot of room for the, for the density. So I just thought it might be a really good idea. Um, and then what we're going to do is put... <clears throat> The uh, weed, uh, this stuff in here, right? And we'll put it across there, and then we're going to use sand to fill it in, especially here in the middle. And the sand will uh, pull the leach the water up and across, and then the the soil will actually uh, uh, pull the water up from there. So, uh, thereby wicking it, right? So let me see if I can make that happen. Okay, so we put the weed barrier paper in here, the, and we're going to use some sand down here in the middle 
Um, I'm gonna fill that up like that and pack that down in. Make sure that we're still well covered. And uh, of course, what this does is keeps the sand out of this down here. So that if we ever have to pull it apart, it's a whole lot easier. And uh, um, of course, you don't need nearly as much sand either. <laughs> the sand doesn't uh, have as big of uh, gaps between it, so it doesn't hold as much water. So you don't have nearly as much of a reservoir sitting in there. But it works really good to wick the moisture up and, and across, so we're going to do that now. Okay, so we put in the sand, and it took quite a bit. Uh, six bags, actually. More than I expected. We also put in our drain holes uh, here and here because we're kind of sitting at a little bit of a slant, so the water's going to drain this direction. Um, the next thing I want to do here is I'm going to put some... Um, uh, in the instructions, they, the guy was using... Um, uh, sugarcane mulch, but what I'm going to use is just some sphagnum moss, um, you know, peat moss that you can buy, uh, come, you know, in a big square, uh, like a bale. And I'm going to put a thin layer of that across there, and then we're going to start filling it with dirt. And uh, that should actually give us one hell of a nice bed. Cool. Show you more in a minute. Okay, it's full. I'm wore out. That's uh, three of the big bags of miracle Grow potty mix. Um, Two of the composted cow manure that we're looking at right there. Um, and then two, I don't even know how big they were, 40 pound bags or something like that, of uh, potting uh, mix that, that they, we bought at a, uh, at a nursery this morning. But to be honest with you, it's too loamy. It has too much um, like pine bark and stuff in it. It's, it's really from... You know starting plants in and not necessarily growing them so I'm but I mixed in two bags of that and I mixed this all together with a layer of the the uh, peat moss the sphagnum peat moss I guess I'm saying that right um, at the bottom just above the sand and then the sand see the reservoir should hold the water the sand should wick it up and as the sand wicks it up then it should actually come through and the soil should pick it up and slowly bring it back up uh, and wicking it up to the rest of the plants. And because the water's deep, the roots will grow down. This is a lot like those global buckets that I put together a few years ago, two, three, three or four years ago. Um, but of course I can grow a lot more stuff in it. You know, I can probably put, you know, six or eight plants in here, depending on what I'm putting in. You know, if they're Roma tomatoes, I could probably put four of them in here. Um, Again, just depends on what I'm planting, but because they have so much fertilizer, so much good stuff in there, um, you know, I should be able to plant them close together too, closer together. I also put a little bit of bone meal in and blood meal down in the middle and worked it into the soil before I covered more up. Um, Got to have the calcium in there for uh, good strong roots and good strong uh, limbs, as well as really good um the tomatoes the, the bloom end rot that tomatoes and of course a lot of other things get but the, t the bloom end rots caused by a lack of calcium so when we went ahead and we went ahead and added some in here it was one of the problems that i had with the global buckets and all i used was the potting mix and evidently there's not enough calcium in the potting mix so i added the bone meal uh threw some blood meal in there just for the nitrogen and stuff and then like i said there was also composted manure in there a couple bags of that um the peat moss down at the bottom. I am actually going to add some of the uh, the red wiggler composting worms to this and of course they just got tons of stuff in here to eat and of course as they eat they'll continue to refertilize all the plants and and uh, all that fun stuff so Panda are you having a good time? Yeah? You're on candid camera. She helped me this whole time sniffling snuffling <laughs> now that it's up at the top she can put her nose in it so you can see over there was kind of dented in that's from her nose so but anyway it's a lot of work and yet only because things are heavy but i can't wait to finish this one off <clears throat> and i'll get this getting late now but uh on third today's tuesday thursday a couple days from now i'll get some plants put in here in fact i might do it tonight because i've got some sitting in pots and uh, but i've got to water this and um get it ready so i have the feeling the soil is going to 
compact some more, so I'll probably be adding more soil to it. But anyway, so far so good. We'll see how she holds water and see if my drain holes work and get this thing all wetted down. Very cool. All right, so <clears throat> I wetted the top down really good um, just to get the water down in there. It's kind of like priming the pump, you know what I mean? Where it could get some moisture already going so that as it starts to evaporate off, it just continues to pull up from the bottom. And now we are filling the reservoir. So as soon as we see our, uh, our drains over there start to push water out, we're probably good. So, yeah, man, get this done.